last year, many of the questions about big data were related to its definition. What is big data? How do we know when we have it? Um, how do we start to prepare for it? This year, most of the questions from our clients are uh, around, uh, you know, we know we have big data. We're trying to think about how to manage it better, how to get more value from it, how to monetize it. Um, so I think we're past the, uh, past the place where many organizations are trying to understand what it is. I mean, Gartner published a, a definition of big data a number of years ago um, that builds on a, actually a research note that I wrote uh, 14 years ago this, this month, first introducing the three V's that are commonly used to define big data. They are uh, the volume of data, the velocity of data, and the um, variety of data. And what we find is that most companies are challenged by the, the variety of data. The vendors have done a good job of, of helping organizations deal with higher volumes, larger sizes of data, um, deal with the increased speed of data, but it's really the, the variety of data coming from a number of different data sources, both inside and outside the organization, that are really the, the key challenge and um, continue to be for organizations. So as far as hype goes, uh, I think we're a bit beyond the hype. Companies are, are recognizing that there are legitimate use cases. Gartner has compiled several hundred use cases of how organizations are, are using uh, information and big data and advanced analytics in innovative ways. And as far as the, the Gartner hype cycle, um, it is uh, uh, post-peak. Probably we, we believe that Gartner peaked on the Gartner hype cycle around uh, February of last year. And now it's sliding into what we call the trough of disillusionment, right? Um, and that's not necessarily a bad thing. It's a, it's a common life cycle for any kind of technology or, or concept. Uh, and what it means is that the, you know, the early adopters were successful, but now the fast followers or late followers are, are finding um, some challenges with it because they're not the types of organizations from a cultural or technical or skills or, or budgetary standpoint that um, can make that kind of shift um, as readily as others. The, the first lesson is that you need to think a little bit differently than traditional business intelligence. So to get value out of large, fast, varied data sources, um, you don't want to go back to just creating pretty pie charts and beautiful bar charts. You have to go beyond that to do more advanced analytics or what we call uh, um, diagnostic or predictive or prescriptive analytics. And that's where the real value from, from big data comes, not just in creating bigger and badder bar charts, right? So the other lesson is that it really takes uh, a significant uh, amount of leadership and, and vision to do innovative things with, with big data. Uh, again, as we move away from just doing uh, reporting to making data part of, an integral part of the, uh, of the success of a business, um, it requires vision to come up with ideas. What are the really chewy questions that if you could answer them could transform your business? That's where organizations are finding value with big data. The other thing is that uh, we, we find that successful organizations are not trying to copy what others in their own industry are doing, but rather looking for inspiration from other industries. Uh, there's a police department um, in a major city that's using uh, seismic algorithms to predict where crimes are going to be in the city with a tremendous success rate. They've been able to reduce their crimes 30% um, by using this seismic algorithm and applying it to crime patterns. Finally, it's, uh, you, I think we'll talk about the role of the data scientist. Again, moving away from your traditional BI analyst, um, there are, there's room for a separate kind of organization that's more experimental and speculative and opportunistic with the, with the data, uh, not just, again, re, you know, reporting on it. And that's the realm of the, of the data scientist. But you know, we, we contend that there's room for both of those kinds of organizations to exist, one that does the standard reporting Companies will always have to do standard reporting for you know, compliance reasons and financial reporting, uh, but then becoming more experimental with, with data and having a, a data science organization um, is really where most of these great solutions come from. I think there are a couple of schools of thought on that. One is, uh, you know, ultimately there is going to be no privacy, um, but um, there's a growing movement of what we call digital ethics and that organizations that want to 
not suffer reputational issues need to deal with their customer data ethically. Um, and so uh, it's something that, that Gartner started researching over the last year and published some, some research on. So um, while there are certain kinds of privacy controls that uh, I think are uh, probably obvious to a lot of organizations, really it has to do with what are you doing with the customer data that you've collected and are you using it in a way that creates a a win-win situation both for your, your organization and the customer. And organizations that can demonstrate that um, at, and, and where that doesn't get out of balance um, are, uh, are going to thrive. Those that um, use customer data mostly for their own benefit and there's not an, an evident benefit for the customers, they will suffer and have suffered reputational um, and ultimately you know, market issues.